So all we need to do to get this set up um, in terms of wiring is actually add a receiver. And there's not a lot of space in here. On my original, let's have a look here. This is uh, an X4R, FR Sky X4R, S bus. And there's not a lot of room in there as you can see. And I have more recently moved over to the XSR as my favorite receiver. Uh, it's smaller than the X4R. I quite like the fact that it has soldered aerial connections um, because you can see what's going on and they're pretty secure. Um, and you can see there's a lot more options for getting that fitted in there. And also the, the antennas are a little bit shorter. Um, just makes for a, a neater build basically. But before I get this in here I'm going to uh, de-pin this. Um, I don't want to use uh, this connect so these are the this is the standard cable that comes with the X4R um, and we connect need to connect that onto this connector here. Um, it's all a bit too much. So I'm gonna de de-pin this and I'll show you how to do that in detail. It's pretty straightforward. You just need a steady hand. I know it's already a pretty small receiver, but um, this connector uh, can get in the way. Uh, plus, it's just going to make it easier for us to have the wires and then plug it directly into the, um, the GT2. So the first thing we need to do is remove the heat shrink, cut along the edge of the board like that. This has actually become my favourite uh, receiver now. I used to use the X4R on everything. Um, but this is pretty much the same deal, um, 16 channel with telemetry. The easiest way to deepen this is to basically cut off all the plastic surrounding here um, and then pull off unsolder each pin individually. If you try and do it all in one go, you're going to mess up the board, you're going to pull the pads off. So the easiest way to do this is just slowly go around and cut off. Careful not to cut the pins. And sorry. Okay, so there we go. We've got the uh, the plastic cover off. It just makes it a lot easier to do it this way. You end up with a a neater way of doing it. And I find the best way to do this is basically to uh, just do this one pin at a time, just bend it back slightly. You can grab it with your helping hand. Like this. You do that. Just gently heat up the back and pull the board. A little bit more solder I think just to get that going. There we go. Nice and neat. So again, just bend. Connect it back a little bit. Grab it with your helping hand. A little bit of solder on there. Just pull, and it'll come off nice and neatly without causing any damage to the board. You can see that comes off beautifully. So we're just going to use S bus at the top, ground and um, plus five. Um, to do this, I'm going to use one of the leads that comes in the pack, which is this one. So it's pretty clearly labelled. Um, the way diatone do this is brilliant. So uh, this is a cable that obviously plugs onto uh, a receiver. We don't want all that. 
we're just going to cut these off. We'll remove the PPM wire and um, we're just going to solder directly onto this. So let's get that done. If we look on the GT2, let's just um, get this open. So the way that you open this up, you do undo these two Allen screws at the front. You'll find that the ones at the back are longer than the ones at the front because otherwise they would dig straight into the camera. Keep those safe over there. This lifts up. And if we look at this connector here, this one here is the one that we're going to connect the receiver to and we can see that the connector goes ground, 5 volts, CPPM and S bus. So we only need three of those connectors. And if we look at this guy here, plugs in that way round, hopefully. Oops, now I've got it all the way around, good job I checked. Okay. That makes sense because black is at the top, which is ground, 5 volts, and we don't need the third wire, which is that one, and we're going to use the top one, which is S-Bus. So, just snip these off for now, don't need that, don't need that. Um, Let's get rid of this third wire because we're not going to need it. And the easiest way is just prise up the little locking tab and then that'll just pull out. So all we're going to do is to solder these wires onto those pads. I don't think we need too much length let's just quickly check i think we'll put the antennas coming out the back so in fact i think if we chop them off about there it gives us some access but we don't want lots of wire kicking around so let's get that done we're just going to do a quick continuity check continuity meter just to make sure there's nothing bridging across these two or any of these that looks great so we just need to get that wrapped up with some heat shrink I do quite like the X the XSR um, I like the fact that the antennas are soldered on um, which makes makes them a nice really solid connection and I'd just like to press that down make sure we've got a nice tidy connection Okay, so there we've got our D-pinned XSR ready to plug directly into the GT2. One of the things I've noticed um, that is a subtle change from the original GT2 is the way that this VTX antenna mount has been designed. Um, previously there were two lugs on the side um, which meant that you couldn't you could mount one of these BNCs, but if you had a TBS um, Unified Pro and you wanted to put that in, that was impossible. But now they put the lug on the top and the bottom. That's actually pretty good. Um, they do provide a small anodized bracket, which is supposed to clamp down the XST, the power connectors on here. Um, there is no way that you're going to get that in there. Um, it looks like a bit of an afterthought in a way, it's a nice idea, but because of the way the coax comes off the VTX board, the SP2 board, um, you can't get that 
anodized piece in there. So I'm just going to uh, push these back in into there and uh, wrap it around with a with a tie wrap. And obviously, if you're doing this, make sure that you don't pull the uh, the coax off the VTX board because that'll give you all sorts of problems. It's a nice idea having that little bracket, um, but I think they probably didn't realise that it was. Okay, so next, let's get this hood up. Um, we'll stick this in a bit later, but I think what I'm going to do is, so let's double check, we've got um, from right to left, we've got ground 5 volts, and S bus, ground 5 volts and S bus, and plug that in there. Looking at the legend on the PCB on the flight controller, it's ground plus 5 and S bus at the bottom. That's the second time I've got that the wrong way. No, this is the right way around. There we go. We can stick this down with some double-sided foam tape in a minute. Um, to be honest, on the G my original GC2, I just left this. Um, it's not going to go anywhere because of the way it fixes on. And what we're going to do is mount these out on some cable ties coming out the side here, which gives you the uh, the nice diversity, antenna diversity that you need. So I think I'll take these off and use those. Okay. I've got a couple here. I'm just gonna go that way around. So basically what I'm doing is replacing one of the cable ties with a new one. And then we'll heat shrink this. Bring it down that way. Onto the, uh, the cable tie. I used to use uh, this this mechanism um, to have a nice a 90 degree separation between the two antennas, and this was up nice and high, um, just to keep them out of the way of the props. But to be honest. Um, I've modified that now and I tend to use this mechanism which works pretty well to be honest One done. The other one done. There we go. So all we need to do now is get this buzzer fitted, and that connects to one of the connects on the front. So the easiest way to do this from but with my other GT2, you can take the camera sides off, but actually I think this is a better way to do it. Because it gives you access straight to the, these connectors. So just as a double check, we look on here, it's pins 1 or 2, the bus positive is pin 1, and the bus negative is into so the best way to do this I think is just to remove these pins from this two pin connector and we'll just put them in in place of the ones that are on the the one that's on the board already. You can do this just by putting a 
something sharp in there lifting up the little tab pulling it out you don't need to force it so it's any soldering Okay, that's good. And we just need to fit this back in here. Like that's a key connector, so you can't get it the wrong way round. I'll leave that tucked in there where it came from. It's just basically the camera and video connections. Two little slots. Okay, that's looking good. Bring it those up. Um, this isn't going to go anywhere once that screw those nicely down there. Make sure it's tidy. It's reasonably tidy. It's going to come over the top. Oh, and those stay down there. Okay, there we go. Great. So we can put these two front screws back in so we've got the XSR receiver in there that's great um, we've got the antennas on we've got the XT60 and the power cables strain relief with the tie wrap on there which is great now although this has come pre-built just to be on the safe side it's a good idea to just go around and check that everything is tight so ah, that was loose you see trust no one these don't need to be super tight um, they've obviously in the factory they don't seem to use any sort of thread lock and I'm not particularly a fan of thread lock, but it does have its place. Uh, we'll see how this goes. If these do tend to come loose, then we'll uh, put a bit of thread lock on them. That's good, that's good. Tight, 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 tight. So the camera is tight. Great, so um, we know the buzzer works, we've done a short test on here so we know nothing's going to blow up when we connect the battery. Um, all we need to do now is bind the receiver to our transmitter and get uh, things set up in beta flight. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is to get our radio set up and we'll create a new model. Menu, I'll run through this pretty quickly. Create a model. And it's a quad. And set the channels. There we go. Long press to confirm. Uh, menu, oops. Page, no. Eh? Model name, we'll call it GT. 2017 I think okay and we're going to set the failsafe mode 
to no pulses. It just guarantees it falls out the sky if it loses signal. So that's good. And the way I'm going to set this up is um, my standard way of doing things. Let's get out of that. Back to the menu. Um, <clears throat> I use switch SG as my arm switch. I use SH as my buzzer switch. And I use switch SE for my three modes. And that's just the basic setup. So let's get those sorted. Page, go through to page five, which is the inputs. These are obviously already set up as part of the initial creation of the model. Enter input name. Oops. Enter. We'll call this arm. And the source is switch SG. Exit, exit, exit. That's good. And we'll set up a new one called mode. And the source is SE. And the last of the inputs is going to be the buzzer. And the source is SH. Excellent. Now that's all the inputs set. Uh, we go to the next page, which is page six, which is basically the output. So we bind those to the inputs. Next name is arm. Uh, the source is already set to arm. Good. Channel 6 we will set to mode. There we go. And the source is already set to mode. That's good. And we're going to create the last mix, which is going to be buzzer. And the input is buzzer. Great, so that's all we need to do. Run through that pretty quickly. There's loads of other videos on my channel that explain this, and there's loads of other videos on YouTube. So I haven't gone into any detail in that and the whys and wherefores. So that's already set up, and we now need to bind this to our receiver and set up the quad using Betaflight. Okay, so we've got our quad connected with a battery. Um, there's not quite enough power from the USB connector to power up everything. Uh, make sure you have props off, antenna connected, um, green lights on so we know we're bound, radio set and we've got the model selected. Okay, so here we are in beta flight. Let's just connect. Uh, yep, yeah, quad's working. That looks good. Uh, we'll just calibrate the accelerometer. We've got expert mode set up here so that we can set the fail safe and so on. Let's have a quick look and see what version of beta plot we've got running on here. Version. It's Fury F3, which is good, with an OSD. Uh, version 3.1.7, which is the latest um, valid uh, version. So we'll stick with that. I'm not going to change too much because I want to see how this flies out of the box. So let's go, so it's going to reset now. Every time you go into the command line interface, it resets. When you quit, okay, so ports. So these are set up UR1, UR2, UR3 is for S bus. Um, I think UR2 um, is enabled probably for telemetry. I'm not going to use telemetry initially, I'm going to set that up a bit later on because we've got no an OSD, which is great, and I'm quite happy with that for now. Configuration, uh, D-Shot 600, which is fine. I think uh, we're all set up with SBUS, which is good. Option slump, we can turn that on, although I'm not gonna use it just at the moment. OSD we've got enabled. 
Save and reboot. Let's connect again. Configuration was good. Check our fail safe. We are on drop, which is good. We'd already set the fail safe on the transmitter to no pulses. We'll check that in a minute. Pitch tuning. These look fairly stock to me, actually. Let's see if they've set up any of the additional profiles. No. These are all exactly the same. So we'll leave those as they are. The rates look a little bit on the low side. Let's just check and see if they've got any different rate profiles. No, we'll put that back to one. These rates look a little bit on the low side, but uh, let's see how it goes. Receiver, let's check everything's working. Throttle looks good. We'll calibrate that and get it centered exactly in a minute. That's good. Roll left, roll right, pitch forward, pitch back. That's good. We've got uh, AUX2, which is for our mode. We've got ARM and we've got AUX3, which is going to be using for the buzzer. So let's go and set up some modes. So I've already been in actually and set the arm, so let's do that from scratch. So add range. We're gonna arm on switch. SG, which is... Okay, that's good. We've got a battery connector, so that's working. That's good. Um, we can remove that. That's good. Um, angle mode. We are going to have angle mode set on the four position of switch S E. Fairly normal. So we've got so that's on aux two, make your pardon. So that's angle mode. And the end range horizon, which is the middle position on aux 2. That looks good. And acro uh, is when they are both off. So we don't actually have to specifically set anything for acro. But what I do like to do is use air mode when I'm on. Um, acro. So if we make this aux 2 and put that up there, then basically what happens is when we're in acro, we automatically get air mode, which is just the way I like to fly it. You can choose how you want to set that. So let's just save all those settings. So we've got angle, horizon air mode and because neither angle or horizon is set it will default to acro which is good arm and the motors are armed and turning we'll just check they're going the right direction to start with that's good yep they're all turned the right direction so let's just set up the buzzer we can use aux 3 which is this switch here when that's on we set the buzzer. That's good. Save. All working. That's a quick look through here. Check OSD. I've already been in and changed as to how I like. I don't like too much on my OSD. I just need to know the flight mode. Uh, what my battery voltage is and my flight time. I'm not really interested in anything else. Um, you can drag these around wherever you want them. Personally, I like them at the top, out the way. Um, video auto. And the alarm will set to five minutes on time. And save that. Sensors, not interested. Oh, so what do the wrong thing. So yeah, it's all working. Tethering log, I don't need to bother with that. Okay, that's great. So we are ready to fly. And 
we can disconnect. Right, so that's everything set up. As a quick check, um, what we're going to do is make sure that failsafe is working. Always a good thing to do. So we can arm, we're flying, turn the transmitter off. We're getting the beeping because uh, we've lost the uh, signal from the radio and all the motors have stopped. So I'm happy that if we lose anything on our test flight, it's just going to drop out of the sky. The only way to stop that is to disconnect it if I can get the battery off. Okay, great. <clears throat> Let's get some props on. And I'm going to use the props that came with this. Um, because I want to fly this completely as standard and um, I will probably put some cyclones on because these are my favourite props um, I have no idea what these are 5045s, that's all it says So there we got the props on, we've got a camera strapped on, um, I only like to put this on just because it uh, um, balances out the weight of this and puts the centre of gravity um, about the middle here which is great um, and we're ready to fly. So I'm just going to give that a quick test and then we should get out and give it its maiden. The maiden flight is at the end of part one and the rates were way too low and I really couldn't get on with the supply props. On this flight, a couple of days later, I replaced the props with Dell Prop Cyclones and increased the roll pitch and yaw rates to 0.8 which made it much more responsive. There's some jerkiness and vibration that needs tuning out but it's a good starting point and I generally like the extra power that these Sunny Sky Edge motors deliver. However, the original D Silver motors do have a smoother power delivery which I really like. Enjoy the flight.